The Curry Shearwater is one of the largest North Atlantic seabirds with a wingspan of over one meter. 75% of the world population breed in the Azores archipelago, making these islands a vital stronghold for the species. During the summer months, the distinctive raucous calls of the adult birds return to the nests can be heard from almost anywhere along the coast after sunset. This nocturnal species raises a single chick in a cavity nest, often hidden in dense undergrowth or on steep cliffs. This makes studying behavior a challenge. Until now, very little was known about what Corishia woods do in their colonies at night. Pues este proyecto surge en 2019, en verano, cuando estábamos monitorizando la colonia de, de Pico y estábamos haciendo pues, nuestro trabajo habitual de monitorización de, de los nidos, eh, cogiendo biometrías, anillando las crías y mis colegas y yo pues, empezamos a, a preguntarnos cómo hacían las crías para, para llegar al mar. A veces las distancias no son tan, tan cortas y, y nos preguntamos pues, si ellos lo hacían pues, caminando o si conseguían volar y llegar al mar. Y cuando fuimos a buscar toda esa información eh, nos dimos cuenta pues, que, que no se sabía, que no estaba documentado. Por eso lo que hicimos las siguientes semanas fue colocar unas, unas cámaras de, de vídeo infrarrojas que se activan con el movimiento y, y bueno, pues eh, queríamos estudiar un poco qué pasa por la noche. ¿no? Eh, fue muy curioso porque cuando comenzamos a ver los vídeos en el ordenador eh, pues descubrimos que las crías hacen excursiones, salen del nido, salen varias veces y realizan diferentes eh, ejercicios. Realmente hay mucha vida nocturna y fue muy interesante ver, ver el comportamiento de las crías. In the Azores, it is already well known that Corrie shearwaters return to their colonies from February onwards and that the courtship period lasts until mid-May. A single egg is laid between late May and early June and hatching occurs during the second half of July. The breeding period ends when the chicks fledge and head out to sea in late October and early November. However, so far, the chicks of most species have been poorly studied during these crucial months of development between hatching and fledging. In 2021, Miriam Cuesta Garcia was awarded a National Geographic Early Career Grant to study the nocturnal behavior of curry shearwater chicks. Her goal was to investigate how the activities might relate to body condition at the time of fledging, which in turn may affect survival rates. Working at two colonies on Pico Island, Miriam and her small team selected suitable study nests. They placed 20 infrared cameras in position to monitor both adult and chick behavior throughout the breeding season. From the time the chicks hatched at the end of July until they left their nest for the last time in late October, the researchers traveled to Pico four or five times a week. They downloaded the data from the cameras, measured and weighed the chicks. As far as we know, this is the first time that the nighttime excursions of Corrie Shearwater chicks have been scientifically studied. 21 field trips were made between June and November. In total, 352 hours of video were analyzed second by second to reveal exciting new data about the duration of the chicks' excursions and what type of nocturnal activities they engaged in. The first excursion out of the nest occurred when the chicks were 65 to 70 days old. At first, the chicks were uncertain, stopping at the entrance or making short trips outside. But they gained confidence as the days went by, and in the final nights before leaving their nest to go to sea, some chicks spent more than 11 hours outside. The nocturnal excursions continued over an average period of 27 days. The chicks always returned to the nest before sunrise, which at this time of year occurs around 7.30 a.m. In total, each chick made about 50 excursions because they often made more than one trip out of the nest in a single night. 
The chicks engaged in numerous different behaviors while outside their nests. Majority of the birds' activities appear to be linked to preparing themselves for flying and for their life at sea. For example, wing and leg stretches. Vigorous wing flapping. Walking. And preening were all seen frequently. The chicks also received visits from their parents during the night. Adults normally fed their young inside the nest or at the entrance. Parental visits decreased as the fledging date approached. And in most cases, the adults stopped visiting their chicks 10 to 15 days before they left their nest for the last time. Cory shearwater is an important species that can act as a potential indicator for the state of marine ecosystems and the high seas. But unfortunately, they face some serious threats. In various studies from around the world, worrying numbers of seabirds, including chicks, have been found to have plastic in their digestive tracts. This can lead to malnutrition or may even kill them. Plastic, as well as chemical pollution, also leads to habitat degradation, both in breeding colonies and at sea. Another potential cause of mortality, especially for fledglings, is disorientation caused by artificial lights. On their first ever flight, when they depart for the sea at night, the young birds can become easily confused by bright lights and may collide with buildings or land on roads where they are injured or killed by cars. Predation in the colonies is also a known problem. Miriam and her team recorded a number of mammalian predators around the study nests and encountered an unexpected challenge during their fieldwork. Las aves marinas tienen diferentes amenazas, entre ellas pues la, la depredación por parte de mamíferos introducidos, como pueden ser los gatos, los hurones, las ratas. Y nos sorprendió mucho ver cómo eh, a través de los vídeos eh, vimos un gato atacando y matando a, a diferentes crías de, en la colonia. Estábamos bastante preocupados y decidimos pues, contactar a, a una asociación que se llama Santuario Animal du Pico para que nos ayudaran a, a capturar al gato y sacarlo de, de la colonia. No fue una tarea fácil, fueron varias semanas intentando capturarlo hasta que finalmente nos llamaron para decir que, que sí, que lo habían cogido y bueno, eh, la pregunta ahora era ¿y qué hacíamos con el gato? Eh, la suerte es que una de nuestras compañeras que vive aquí en Fallal se ofreció para darle un nuevo hogar a, a Jerry, que es como se llamara eh, el gato y bueno, pues después de varias semanas de, de adaptación ya finalmente está completamente instalado en su nuevo hogar y, y es feliz. Infelizmente, el número de gatos salvajes y callejeros que existen en la isla es muy elevado y desde aquí me gustaría hacer un llamamiento a, a los dueños para que sean responsables y castren a sus mascotas. As confirmed by Miriam and her research team in this study, remote video recording is a valuable means of observing bird behavior with a minimum disturbance to the birds. The use of simple infrared trail cameras is ideal because they are small, relatively inexpensive easy to transport and make night monitoring possible, thus enabling new studies to fill important knowledge gaps. The results of this research will be invaluable for planning future conservation campaigns, raising public awareness about seabirds and contributing new data to the scientific community. Nonetheless, it remains essential to continue studying this species in order to further unravel its secrets and to preserve the marine biodiversity of the Azores.